All right, so we are back up. I know y'all are looking at the OBS screen right now, but we're about to pop onto the map again. And I just wanted to let y'all know, I apologize, but we just saw right then and there that that was actually a DDoS attack. That's one of the few that we've been able to see. It certainly was. It was a direct attack onto our servers and pretty much overloaded our servers and shut them down nearly. But we are once again back. Hopefully the stream is running fine and I'm about to throw up everything on my second screen so that way I can make sure to have everything running as usual. Um, so we're, of course, sending out messages that the stream is back up and running. Hope that a lot of people join back. And just a second, before anyone adds anything to the fundraisers, let me go through and add it to this uh, to this video. So do not donate yet. I'll tell you all when the fundraiser is right back up here. So let me get that back up. Sorry, once again, everyone. Unfortunately, unfortunately, people out there don't want us doing this stuff. And so they've DDoSed attacked our stream. So let me go back through and add that to our fundraiser. And now couldn't have had better timing on that either. Just uh, right in the middle of the fundraiser too. Somebody decided to attack us. Yeah, it's really annoying. So we are back. I see that a lot of y'all are joining back really quickly. And thank God uh, we were able to recover the stream very quickly. But that was one hell of an attack. That was actually the first one where Matthew could actually tell me that was definitely a DDoS attack. Every once in a while, we've had something like this happen before. Make sure to put on slow mode, um, by the way, Matthew. Make sure it's a subscriber-only chat. So that way we can make sure to try and avoid some different versions of the DDoS attack. But give us just a second, everyone. Because we are going to sit here and keep the stream running. I've told y'all before, and I will say it again, as long as our internet is running and we are alive, these streams are going to keep running until the end of time. Just for y'all to also know, please make sure to click the refresh button, and the fundraiser should have popped up in the live chat section. I once again highly suggest that y'all do donate to this fundraiser. It is still running, and we just moved it from the last video to this one. We are at $4.6,000 already, and the last stream was only around 25 minutes minutes in. So make sure to tell all of your friends and everyone else to hop back on because we are going to keep this thing going and the news is going to keep on flowing. This will never stop and no matter who tries to stop us or what kind of powers that be are trying to put this thing down, this thing is going to run until the end of time. So with that, I welcome all of y'all back. Sorry once again. Uh, if any of y'all do have questions, and if you, if any of my viewers, any of the Lee Spring Army members, see people in the chat asking what happened, why did the other stream go down, tell them it was a DDoS attack, because that's what we have on our end. So, with that, we are now going to get straight back to the news. Um, and I th and I see some of y'all saying, I thought we had a VPN. Uh, well, we're not going to go into the security side of things on this channel, but we are thinking about that. But anyways, with that... We're now going to get back to the video, and I'm going to rewind it a little bit just in case if y'all missed some of it, because I was completely unaware that the internet was down until this video was over. Um, so with that, let's get right back to the news. Here we can see an Irpin in the city square. Of course, a large amount of these buildings destroyed. And if you don't see the fundraiser, just reminding y'all, please make sure to click the refresh button because it is there. It may not be showing up for you because it, um, your video is not refreshed yet. So now you can see some of the destroyed cars that are still left over from when this was an active battlefield. And the destruction in Irpin stretches on and on. We can see a Ukrainian flag attached to one of the destroyed cars. And now we can see some Ukrainian soldiers surveying the remains of what was a Russian vehicle out in this field. We can see one in the background that looked like it may have been some kind of a MLRS, like an Uragon perhaps. But we can't really tell for certain. <laughs> Каждая, блин, сколько там метров такие валяются в радиусе вообще хрена его знает сколько.
and you still see the scars of battle, although this battle left nearly two months ago, still exists in the European area and will be existing for quite some while. Hopefully the Ukrainians can rebuild this city back even better than it was before, and hopefully everyone who has been displaced in this war, which this fundraiser is for tonight, can return home and eventually return back to their normal lives. And you know something? I can't stand the idea that people can sit here and DDoS this channel, and I now see that we have around 2,000 viewers on right now, and I want, I want to ask y'all all this, because no one's going to stop this channel from doing what we do, and in fact, we're going to do even better after these attacks. So I ask you all to do this. I ask you all to reach out to your friends and your family, like I said in the first stream, but this time seriously, and ask them to come on here and donate, because we're not going to let some Russian thugs or some group of internet thugs show, tell us what to do and shut down our streams and try and stop us from doing what we do. This is about the fourth time that this has happened on this channel over 116 days of this war, and this is about the second time that we've been able to actually verify that this was a DDoS attack. Uh, it had the clear signs of one when we looked at it, and Matthew said this is 100% a certainty it's a DDoS attack. So I hope that all of y'all spread the word about this stream and get it out there because these people have tried to sabotage tonight's fundraiser and we're never going to let that happen. This stream will never stop, this channel will never stop, and we're going to keep this thing running till the end of time. Speaking of which, this is what I would like to do to Putin at this point, but we've actually seen some Russians in St. Petersburg showing their distaste for Putin and the government in charge right now, and they paintballed, and you wouldn't believe this, I can't actually believe this, they paintballed a bronze statue of Putin that made his likeness like a Russian emperor. I've, I've never actually believed that there was a statue like this, but this statue is actually of Putin as a, Russia, as a Roman emperor. I've never seen anything like this before. I didn't know this kind of um, idolatry existed within Russia, but this shows you the level of propaganda that the Russians have for, for Putin. First, they had him riding a bear. Now they have his likeness as a Russian, well, a Roman emperor, which is insane to me. And that once again reaffirms my idea that he thinks of himself as a new czar of a new Russian empire, which hopefully we can make sure that he never becomes. With that, we're now going to be moving out of Russia. And we're now going to be moving down to our location unknown news. We have a decent amount of them today, much more than the previous days, around 12 bits of news. And so, let's get right into them. Starting off, we can see a BNP blowing up in fantastic fashion. And a lot of y'all may be asking, well, is it really fantastic? And I'm going to let y'all see this video here and decide for yourselves. And we can see the field in front of them. And then we're about to see... The most impressive BNP explosion in the war. That's something. I don't know what exactly what hit that BNP, but whatever hit it certainly knocked it out. As we can see, a couple of chunks flying around. So I would assume that that BNP doesn't even exist in the form of a, v of a BNP anymore. It's most likely a couple of wheels left on the ground with a Russian driver of the tank looking like Wile E. Coyote after an Acme failed explosion. With that, we're now going to be moving to the next bit of news, where we can see the Ukrainians dropping more bombs on the Russians, this time by a drone. And now here's something else that's interesting to me. Whenever we see the Russians say that they've dropped a VOG grenade onto the Ukrainians, they're literally dropping something like a ghetto bomb, you know, like a bomb in a cup or something like that. But here in this little clip, we can actually see the Ukrainians dropping a custom-made bomblet that they're calling a, a VOG, but it actually has tail fins on it and also a nose cone, which helps to stabilize itself in flight and make sure that the bomblet falls accurately. We can now see the bomblet being dropped, and you can see what I was saying right there. It has fins on it and also a nose cone, which stabilizes its flight, and it hits dead onto these Russians. And you can see some of them down here in the corner, and it hits right onto the shed that they ran into. We can now see some kind of a van. It looks like the Ghostbusters van. And we can now see them dropping a bomblet onto it as well. And you can see those fins in action right there as that bomblet falls pretty much dead onto its target. 
A normal ghetto bomb, like the Russians would use, could go anywhere. Um, the wind could guide it far to the left, far to the right, into the trees, or anywhere else, and the, and the explosion may be far enough away that it causes a little bit of shrapnel, I guess you could say injuries to the vehicle, but it wouldn't be anything to stop it from running. But this bomblet fell right beside this vehicle, and so we can get a pretty good idea that it's most likely suffered Probably all the tires have been blown, and also the engine block may be beyond repair, and some of the parts may be damaged beyond the point that the car can actually run. And so in that aspect, they have knocked out another Russian vehicle. Once again, great to see, and it's wonderful to know that the Ukrainians are still using drones to this kind of effect, and this effectively this far into the war, and they're only getting better at it, which does tell us that they're refining the drone um, tactics, I guess you could say, and they're going to start using these more and more in Ukraine, and also militaries around the world are most likely going to be adopting drones into their forces, because we can see how versatile they are, and how cheap they are as well. With that, we're now going to be moving on to the next bit of news, where we can see a peon in action. Now, we've seen a couple of these before, but of course, it's nice to see them once again. These are some of the heaviest, or I guess you could say, uh, normal artillery pieces on the field. When I say normal, I'm talking about something that's not an MLRS. A 203mm shell is nothing to scoff at. And here we can see another one firing. <laughs> Golly, you know the recoil from that thing must be just impressive. The shockwave it produces from firing must be something to witness in real life. And so with that, that is the end of this video, but a really cool one. And hopefully that peon is directly on target with what it's hitting further downrange. We're now going to be moving on to our next bit of news, where we can see another ammo dump being destroyed by the Ukrainians. We've seen multiples of these being destroyed over the week, and once again, another ammo depot has been destroyed here in this video. An impressive display of fireworkmanship, something that will put Walt Disney World to shame, and I do believe that Walt Disney World is taking notes on how it should improve its fireworks show based off of the Russian example. So, with that, of course, great to see, and it's wonderful to know that another supply depot has been knocked out within Russian-controlled territory. These sorts of attacks on the logistics depots are very important to the Ukrainians and their objective of pushing counterattacks. The, the less the Russians have ammo available to them, the harder it will be for them to defend or even carry on the offensive they have going on in Severodonetsk right now. And so, with each ammo depot destroyed... They are going to be, of course, in a worse position. So, every ammo depot destroyed is one step closer to a Ukrainian victory. With that, we're going to move on to the next bit of news where we can see a BMP get hit by a javelin. This is apparently hit by the SBU counterintelligence force, which we do not know where it is on the front lines. It may just be roaming around wherever, but we can see this BMP-3 right here, sitting in a tree line. They tried to camouflage it best they can, but I don't think those, oh, silly Russians, th uh, know that this bright green fluorescent tarp draped over just half of the turret doesn't really do much to camouflage the rest of it. And the Ukrainians picked up on this as well. Now the Ukrainians are going to fire a javelin at it, as we can see here. The javelin's now on its way, and then it hits the BMP. It's going to take it a second, though. But don't fret, it will hit dead on the mark. And there we have it. Another dead hit by the Ukrainians, and once again, another great success. Credit to the SBU counterintelligence forces that are doing this kind of work around the front. They aren't a... I guess you could say standard frontline unit. I guess you could equate these to the CIA or the FBI if you would like to, you know, try and relate them to an organization here in the United States. But they are still knocking out vehicles just like everyone else. And it's wonderful to know that they are because it is, of course, leading the Ukrainians into a better position where the Russians will have less forces to fight back against the Ukrainians. Hopefully that loss will not be able to be replaced soon. And with that, we are on to the next video, where we can now see a boy that has had to flee Ukraine as a refugee taking care of some trash in a country somewhere else in the world, but we didn't really get an exact description of where. But take a look at this boy as he does his civic duty to Ukraine to make sure that Russian symbolism, wherever it may be, will no longer exist. Here's the video. <laughs> Here's the video. 
у нас в городе. И решили, нахуй она нам тут нужна. Сняли по-мужски. Насали на нее. Ну, в принципе, она только для этого угодная. И куда-то вон туда. It's unfortunately gone slideshow mode. We're going to try and refresh that and see if we can get that fixed. And I'm sorry if I'm a little distracted right now from this video. I'm trying to uh, fix some things on my second monitor um, because, of course, when the last stream went down, everything went to pots. And so I'm still trying to fix some things in the background. But oh, it's going to stay slideshow. Um, we're going to refresh it one more time. Third time's the charm. That's what they always say. And I know that the third time's got to be the charm. Ah, oh, it's not. But let's unmute the video. And you'll be able to hear what he's saying, but sadly, I won't be able to get it out of slideshow. But anyways, we're going to let the video continue. So we can see him throw that Russian flag in the trash through the slides. Of course, just two frames a second. But you could still get the picture that he was throwing away the trash, which is the Russian flag. Great to see this boy continuing on his uh, civic service outside of Ukraine. And hopefully he will be recognized by a lot of people for it. Of course he will be because he's on the stream. And the Lee Spring Army never forgets to give credit to the Ukrainians who are doing their service as well as all of the international people around the world who continue to do their service and help out Ukraine as best as possible. With that, we're now going to be moving on to the next bit of news where we can see some more supplies heading to the front. Now, this was really interesting to me. Apparently, this man was able to get 3,000 tourniquets and 80 IFAX getting ready to send them to Ukraine. And we can see him here. Somehow, I have no clue how he actually managed this, although this is a time-lapse video of him doing it. 